This week's challenge is a classic bit of data preparation. So we've got some PDF um, pages that have been um, put into Alteryx and they're all coming in as a cell per page, which is frustrating, not possible to play with that data at all as it currently stands. So the first thing we're going to do is just going to number each of these pages um, in case we need that later on in the challenge. It's always good to kind of be able to differentiate before you sp start splitting things out and creating more rows. Um, but then once we've done that, we go ahead and use a text columns, uh, but splitting to rows, that option. And so each time it encounters a new line, we split that, um, we split that up basically into a new row. So as you can see here, it's all in one. And then we get multiple lines per page, which is kind of more what you would expect. So we can see that we've got some information up here all about the insurance claims of the challenge. And then we've got a table uh, following that down below. So uh, the first thing that if we have a sneaky peek at the solution is that we're going to need the inception date. And that appears um, in the first line of each of the pages, that little inception date there. So we're going to use a little bit of regex to say that for field one, um, we want, if there's the word inception, we then want the first date that comes after that. Um, so we've got the word inception and then a dot star question mark to just kind of deal with this white space because it might be that there are a different number of spaces on different pages, but basically we don't care what is there, just anything there. And then within our capture group, we've got like, you know, there'll be two digits, um, a dash, and then some more digits and then a dash and then some more digits. And that will be our date. And then there'll be something after it which is what the dot star is referring to. And so we're passing that out um, and we're just calling that column regex for now, um, just because I couldn't think of a more useful name. And I didn't actually realize that you can't change the type here to be a date uh, immediately, which is a bit frustrating. But anyway, um, we use a date time tool next to just make that um, change the regex into a date, into inception. Then we're just going to use a multi-row formula tool to fill that down and just to check or to verify that it's doing the right thing. So these two dates are the same, but it's kind of useful that we've got the separate columns actually to be able to verify that. But yep, here it changes to 2018. And we're just using, uh, we're just updating the inception field and we're grouping by our page number. So our page number did come in useful, that's great. And we're just wanting it to take the row before. So because we're grouping by the page number, it will never, we've got it, the set values to the closest valid row. So therefore the first uh, line of that page, it will just set it to what it already is. And then for the rest, it will just fill it down. So that's great. Now we're kind of more interested in our table and what that can do for us, because that's the data that we want to get out. Um, I did see by like numbering each of the rows, that the table doesn't start on the same row on each page. So, and the table can be different lengths on different pages. So numbering it didn't seem like the most dynamic way to deal with the table. So instead, um, we're first of all, just gonna take out all this white space um, in between each of these, because it just looks like they're not gonna be uniform and it's a pain to have to deal with white space anyway. So we use data cleanse tool uh, on field one just to remove the duplicate white space. That's kind of what we're most interested in there. So now comes a little bit more regex. So we've removed all that white space, that's nice. Now we're saying we just kind of want to identify where we've got tables. So um, as you can see here, it was more clear, I guess, before we did the data cleanse, that the first row of each table has like a number next to it. Bit annoying, but we can deal with that in a minute. But basically we're using the regex match function here uh, to identify it's a table. So we're saying for field one, anywhere where, it, so this digit and then a space that's only present on the first line, which is why these have got question marks after them to say, you know, they might be there, they might not. Um, but then we've got our date, which is kind of a digit, then a slash, then some more digits. That covers this bit here. Then we'll have a space and we'll have um, some numbers. Sometimes there's numbers and then a comma and then some more numbers. So we've got, you know, uh, that number, comma, 
the comma may or may not be there. That's why there's a question mark after it. And then some more digits. Um, and then we've got, we'll definitely have a space after that. But then after that, we've just got, we're not going to type out the whole thing, the whole line as regex, because basically we've differentiated it enough from just those few bits of regex um, from the other rows in this field one. So that when we uh, run that through, then we get a nice kind of like minus one here for um, if it is in fact a table, whereas we get a zero when it's not. So that's great. And then the only thing, other thing that we do there is we're just trying to get rid of this number here. So we're updating field one to say uh, we're using regex match again. So we've taken away these two question marks. So we're saying that it has to start with the number and a space. And if that is the case, then we're using a bit of regex replace to say replace that you know, the little uh, hat is to say that it starts with that digit in that space, and we're just going to replace that with nothing, because then it'll be the same format as each of the other lines of the table. And you can see that that is the case. And that's much nicer, because now when we filter out, we only get our table fields back. We do a little bit of a text columns again to split out all of those different columns in our table in field one. And then now it's just a little bit more cleanup to be done. So we're seeing that here we've got our um, accident date or accident month. So we're just going to use a date time tool again to clean that up. Nice. Uh, we're replacing these commas. Ultrix doesn't really like commas in numbers that it hasn't put there itself. It finds it difficult to then convert that into a number. I think it's to do with the whole fact that, you know, some different countries will use commas and decimal points differently. Um, so it gets a bit confused by all that. So we're just going to replace all the commas using a multi-field tool um, with nothing. Um, so that just gets rid of the commas so that then when we come to our select tool and change all of our data types, then that isn't an issue. I've been lazy here and I've just renamed all the columns manually. Um, just because I haven't had a lot of time this week and I'm sure that that's understandable. It's not very dynamic, but it does the job for this uh, solution. Then um, I've just used a summarize tool because I noticed that I had 66 records, whereas the solution has 33. So we're just grouping by the inception and accident month and summing all of those together, rather than going through and deleting all of the sum before uh, our field name here, I've just brought in a dynamic rename to get rid of the prefix of sum on those columns. And voila, we have something that is exactly the same as the solution. So I hope that was quite easy to follow, quite a quick one this week. So thanks for listening.